credit reports, credit scores. You know they should be good. You know the number should be high. Um, but there's some things in between to get you there, keep you there, and some some things, some information to fill in the gaps to, to, to keep everything together. All right, so here are some credit misconceptions that we're gonna go through right now. And it's so many that we're actually gonna do it in two parts. So here's part one. The first thing is you do not have to carry a balance on your cards to keep a good report, good score. Don't think you have to own anybody forever and ever and ever. If you have the money to pay off a credit card, knock that thing out, do your thing. Um, there's no reason for you to have to keep a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, whatever, on a card just to say, oh, you know, you see, I pay this down, or I, I, I pay this. I don't, I don't keep a high balance on it. You don't have to keep anything on on those cards. Or well, I continuously pay someone, or pay a credit card company, or whomever, just to have them report to the credit bureaus. As long as you have the card open, and have used it at some point. You know, you use it periodically so it doesn't become an inactive card and get canceled that way. Um, but as, as long as you are not using it like crazy and not responsibly by not paying it off, you're okay. You do not have to keep a balance on there just to keep having it report of they've paid off a uh, hundred dollars of this thousand dollars. Yeah, can it. You don't have to. Don't feel locked in like that. The next thing I want to get into is about the kids, the babies, right? So there are some people who would like to open lines of credit for them just to establish their credit. Cool thought. However, I think to think more of investing in their name would be even better be even more beneficial for them later on is one they'll be earning money from that money that you dished out for them mainly tax-free because they're minors right um, in most cases not all the time check your local and federal laws or whatever you're getting into um, but yeah you, they have a lot of tax benefits because they are kids um, also if they if you're showing them what you're doing while while you're doing it they'll be learning along the way which is also going to teach them about budgeting reconciliation all of that good stuff that goes into good uh, financial habits which lead into good credit habits if you choose to go that route um, yeah so I think as equally if not more important than establishing credit for your younger ones um, is establishing uh, investments or getting investments stocks open a brokerage account for them maybe you'll want to invest in a business down the street maybe you'll want to help them start a business um, just those those things showing them those different avenues to take um, will help greatly now one thing that is the vein of many people's existence is uh, student loans. Yes, I said the word. That SL, right? And there's one company in particular that most people think of when they think of student loans or hear the word or phrase student loans. Um, I won't name them today and trigger anything, but uh, chances are how you've heard of them experience dealing with them or know someone who has right so you know they are not always forthright so before I even get into the ne this next piece make sure when you are dealing with uh, lenders especially for student loans you are looking into the laws that exist around them which you can and cannot do because they do not always give full information and sometimes it may not be uh, 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 out of malicious intent you know sometimes it's just whoever you get on the phone that day may not know the full scope of the laws uh, may not have been trained or whatever the case but either way it's always good to just know the rules know the laws um, federally and locally for you in your case right but wanted to say student loans can be consolidated among so many other things they can be consolidated so if you need to have all of your loans lumped 
into one, mainly if they are federal. Private loans are a different beast and don't have as much regulation as federal loans because there are some rights on there. If you have a federal loan, look into it before you think of privatizing it or whatever because um, you have a lot of rights there. But if it's a private loan, mm, some things are a little harder to do. Um, some things you might not be able to do, but federal loans, you can absolutely consolidate federal student loans. So again, for all things student loans, make sure you are looking at the laws that are written um, while they are still pretty uh, uh, borrower friendly in a lot of cases, not all, but a lot of cases. Um, make sure you're checking out what you can and cannot do and what lenders can and cannot do. The other thing, closing your credit card. Don't do it. Oh my God, don't do it. <laughs> so many people have gone down because of this. Um, if you have a credit card that you are no longer using, but you've had it for a while, or if it's your first credit card, if you're just coming out of school, um, if you are in your last year of school, if you're in your first year out of school, leave that credit card exactly where it is you can even pay down the balance do not close it two big reasons why one when you close a credit card um, account you are uh, making a dig at your credit age you're, you're shortening it you're you're making it look really really young um, the older the longer your credit your not your credit limit your credit age the better it looks the longer they see that you have this one um revolving credit or this one whatever it is that you have continuously been current and responsible with right the second thing is if you close down a credit card right get rid of the account the whole shebang you are also lowering your utilization you want to keep that as high as possible say you have like a million dollars to your name like you can do whatever but you only use ten thousand dollars of it you have all of this wiggle room for one two you're showing to your creditors or potential creditors that hey i'm not going to just blow the money right i'm not just going to blow the bank um I'm going to be working with this pretty responsibly. Same thing when you're closing a credit card. It may not be a million dollars, but, or a billion or trillion or whatever. Um, but, so you have $2,000 here in, in one credit card, $3,000 in another credit card, $5,000 in another credit card. Those are numbers I remember, right? So in total, you have $10,000. And you close the one that has $3,000 credit available on it. Or a credit limit so now you've gone from having ten thousand dollars available to having seven thousand dollars quickly so it looks like you've you've uh, blown the money essentially so that's kind of what it looks like when you are closing a credit card so don't close your cards you don't have to use it uh, every once in a while put something on it a coffee uh, one month of your phone bill, something. Just put something on it, pay it, just to keep it current. So it doesn't look like you're not using it and they don't close your account for you. All right, so applying for a new card. Um, it will hurt your credit in the very short term. In the long term, it'll do the exact opposite of what I was mentioning will happen if you close an account so all hope is not lost if you are opening a new account you are increasing your credit um, your available line of credit you are and increasing your utilization by default because you will be starting with a zero dollar balance and hopefully keeping it as close as possible to that zero um, also you will as you have the card open you'll be increasing your credit age so in the short term it'll look like you know you have this new thing it'll bring down your credit age temporarily if you have other cards of other loans and whatever 
uh, the forms of debt um, that are being reported to the boroughs, the bureaus, <laughs> and um, yeah, it'll it'll have a completely opposite effect of clothing card, so it'll be beneficial to you. However, the last thing we'll talk about: if you are opening a new card, all cards are not for you. If you are getting a bunch of offers in the mail or or wherever. Um, don't just jump on any particular one of them per se. Make sure you're digging a little deeper, looking at the rates and fees and any possible rewards. So you want to look to see how much they're going to charge for balance transfers. You want to see how much they are charging for, um, not overdraft, but, uh, overage. If you go over your limit, um, God forbid, but it's something good to know. Um, you want to see what the interest rate is going to be. Are you going to get introductory? And for how long, if so, is it going to be six months? Is it going to be 12 months? Is it going to be 15 months, 18 months? They don't do too many of those nowadays, but check to see what the offer is, right? And you want to look into these things because you want to see how much you may possibly have to pay if ever you were in a crunch and you got in a position where you wound up having to pay one or a few of those fees. Hopefully not, but it's good to know these things so you'll have a an idea and a game plan for further down the line. So that was a lot. So we're going to take a break and next time we'll do part two.